Once it's fully phased in, we get a number of about $430 million per annum. This week in Pennsylvania, nearly half a billion a year, that's what the Independent Fiscal Office estimates taxed and regulated skills gains would bring in. But should we? We're going to debate that today. Polling numbers for Donald Trump and Joe Biden are all over the map in Pennsylvania. Why is that? One pollster has a theory. And mail-in ballots in PA have a new uniform look and color coding to cut down on confusion. Hello and welcome to This Week in Pennsylvania. I'm Dennis Owens. As always, we are covering hot topics in PA policy and politics, as well as the issues that are important to both you and your family. Well, Pennsylvania's primary election is two weeks from Tuesday. That's April 23rd. At the top of the ticket, the major party candidates, they're all set. But PA polls, well, they're all over the map. One this week had Joe Biden up 10 points over Donald Trump. Most of the recent polls have Trump leading Biden in PA by as many as five. Susquehanna polling and research's Jim Lee has Biden up five in a recent poll. He has a theory. He said most pollsters in 2016 underweighted Trump because people taking the polls were shy about admitting they would give the Donald their vote. He says eight years later, that's no longer the case and pollsters have to adjust. Now you see the opposite happening. The only people that have enthusiasm right now are Trump voters, and they're the ones responding to polls. I believe very, very passionately that a lot of the polls are overstating Trump's support in the polling. Lee has 4% undecided in his PA poll. How they break could decide the winner. Also, third party candidates could play a major role come November. But first, the primary election, which is April 23rd. If you've not yet registered, you have until Monday to do so. If you want a mail-in ballot, you need to submit an application for that by April 16th. Well, Pennsylvania has turned to colors to help with clarity when it comes to mail-in ballots in the Commonwealth and uniformity. The ballots are in a packet with a blue stripe. Once you've filled out your ballot, put it in the yellow secrecy envelope. That goes into a purple exterior envelope that you fill out on the back. There's an instruction sheet that's in green with specific directions. I do think it's helpful to have color-coded envelopes differentiating between the secrecy, the return, um, I think that's just helpful for everybody. Color coding kind of helps keep everything organized and more clear. Now, if you'd like to watch the process step by step, we've got you covered. We have a video on our website, thisweekinpennsylvania.com. Well, they are called ghost guns, and House Democrats would like to see them disappear. They passed a bill banning firearms that are privately assembled and untraceable because they don't have serial numbers. They also don't require background checks. Democrats argue they're the weapon of choice for violent criminals, and with no serial numbers, it's impossible for law enforcement to track them down. But Republicans and pro-gun advocates insist banning ghost guns won't deter crime and is a constitutional overreach. When you have government trying to regulate the ability for the people to maintain their freedom, that becomes a problem, no matter what the excuse the proponents of doing away with those rights are. All we are saying is that you have to follow the same existing laws as every other gun purchase. Get a background check and have it serialized. Now, the bill's future is uncertain in the GOP-controlled Senate, but Governor Josh Shapiro calls ghost guns dangerous, supports banning them, and urged the Senate to pass that bill. Blue ribbons around the state capitol are a pretty sight with an ugly reminder about child abuse. Nearly 5,000 blue ribbon flags line a path to the capitol for National Child Abuse Prevention Month. Each flag represents a substantiated case of child abuse in PA in 2022. A memorial garden has 60 black flags representing each child abuse death from that year. Advocates urge everyone to be vigilant, to watch for victims of abuse, including the kind that isn't physical. If a child's behavior's really changed, if they've gone from being a good student to not doing well in school at all, if they've gone to not sleeping, not eating right, um, if they are younger children who are potty trained and they've reverted back to bedwetting. Now, if you suspect abuse, you can call police or leave an anonymous tip at Pennsylvania's Child Line. That number right there on your screen, 800-932-0313. Well, most incarcerated Pennsylvanians will eventually get out and rejoin society. The Democrat-controlled House passed a bill making it easier for them to get photo IDs and work permits. 
Most Republicans voted against the bill. Republicans control the Senate, of course. We asked the bill sponsor whether it could be part of a bargaining tool with Republicans who want to require photo ID for voters. My Republican colleagues want everybody who votes to show an ID. They're also saying that these qualified voters that are leaving incarceration should not get photo ID. And so, you know, until they get on board with the idea that people who are leaving incarceration should get IDs, then we really can't have a conversation about voter ID. And supporters insist the easier it is for them to reenter society and get jobs, the less likely they are to reoffend. Well, Governor Shapiro's budget calls for the legalization of both recreational marijuana and skills games. Those are the gambling machines that have popped up seemingly everywhere. Together, it's estimated they generate three quarters of a billion dollars for the state's general fund. That's not just Shapiro talking, but a recent report by the Independent Fiscal Office, which crunches numbers and leaves the politics to the politicians. The IFO estimates a uh, call for a 42% tax per skills game machine. Once they're up and regulated, we thought there would be about 30,000 games, uh, excuse me, uh, machines that would be taxed. Uh, we think there are, are more of them out there right now, but we, we think with the regulation and the 42% tax that that number will shrink. Now, lawmakers have to pass both recreational marijuana and skills games legislation, and pretty fast if the revenue is to make it for next fiscal year, which begins on July 1st. But should the state tax and regulate those games of skill? It's been a question out there for years. And that is our debate today. And joining us, Mike Barley, public affairs officer with Pesomatic, the company that uh, developed the machines, and Pete Shelley, Clearpoint Communications. Your client is Parks Casino. That's correct. Thank you both gentlemen for being with me. Pete, I want to start with you. The conventional yes, wisdom at the Capitol, as I can tell you, is that, hey, these games are everywhere. Right now they're unregulated, untaxed. Why not just regulate and tax them and the, and the state would make a lot of money? They're regulated, unregulated, untaxed, and unchecked. They're popping up everywhere. I half expect to leave your studio and find a row of them out in your lobby, Dennis. Not um, yet. They're on flatbed trucks <laughs> pulling up at our church picnic. So the issue right now is there's tens and tens of thousands of illegal machines out there. They're draining hundreds of millions from the Pennsylvania lottery, and many, many law enforcement officials across state have uh, called them magnets for crime. You've got armed robberies. You have shootings involving police officers. You had a murder at a clerk store of a clerk at a store up in Hazleton. It's a complete disaster area. Governor Shapiro and his budget called for the legislature. Let's take a look at this, see if we can get there. Two main issues the governor has addressed, the tax rate and the regulation. Tax rate, he wants 42%. That's called parity with the casinos. Casinos pay 42%, 10% local share, and 2% more for a specific project. About 54. So it's it's precisely 54%. So one, every, all your viewers should understand, that's your money. Every Pennsylvania taxpayer is the majority shareholder in the casinos uh, slot machine business. The state gets 54 cents on the dollar. One, two, regulation by the Pennsylvania Gaming Control Board. You don't have a world-class regulatory agency set up to regulate gambling and gaming and try and give the, that responsibility to the Department of Transportation, the Department of Banking, or the Department of Revenue. So the governor's state starting point, Parks Casino, we believe is a very good starting point. And, so you can get a compromise done that protects. So that, well, you're mm -hmm. now talking compromise. That's not really what we were talking about a couple of years ago where we just thought we should get rid of them. So they are everywhere. It's one of the most amazing stories I've ever seen covering politics is how these machines just kind of came in and nobody kicked them out really. And there they are. And there's so many of them out there now. They're just saying tax and regulate what you want to respond to what he just said. Yeah. I mean, look, I think the fact that they're still here is uh, great for Pennsylvania small businesses and fraternal clubs that come to depend on the supplemental revenue. So a lot to unpack there. Um, look, the casinos here believe they have a monopoly. Uh, we have proven that they don't. Uh, this is a different game. We don't compete with the casinos. Uh, the revenues, the record revenues they post every month uh, show that, they demonstrate that. And when you look at what skill games mean for these small business and fraternal clubs, especially as they went through COVID and now go through some difficult times with inflation and higher uh, difficulties hiring, it's getting them by. Um, there is no evidence that our games prove uh, have uh, uh, contributed to any more crime than anything else. In fact, we're doing a study in Philadelphia. Do you know that twice as much crime occurs at those two casinos there than every convenience store combined? Well, we're going to hold it there for just a minute because I do sure. want to talk about Philadelphia. We're going to come back and talk about that. Stay with us. The debate on skills games is going to continue on This Week in Pennsylvania.
This PA Chamber Minute is paid for by the Pennsylvania Chamber of Business and Industry. More women are in the workforce now than ever before, and we are playing invaluable roles leading our businesses and our economy forward. As the statewide voice of business, the PA Chamber actively works to celebrate women's leadership and to empower the next generation of women leaders in both business and civic life. Please join us on April 12th at the Lancaster Marriott for our fourth annual Women in Business Conference, a day that's jam-packed with engaging conversations, professional development, wellness tips, mentorship, and networking. Enjoy dynamic discussions, entertainment, free professional headshots, giveaways, and health-conscious meals, all while connecting with business leaders from across Pennsylvania. Our goal is to inspire attendees to recognize and to embrace their strengths so they can reach new heights in their career. Register for the 2024 PA Chamber Women in Business Conference now at pachamber.org. We take the tax rates, uh, however it's written, uh, we take those details and we run them through the model. And welcome back to This Week in Pennsylvania, continuing our debate of those skills games, which are those machines that you've no doubt seen spreading across the Commonwealth. Mike Barley works for the manufacturer. Pete Shelley represents casinos who uh, don't like them, though I guess now we're willing to talk about it. That was Matthew Niddle of the Independent Fiscal Office. He's the one that estimated $430 million a year when, when fully implemented. But he ran a projections on 42% tax rate per machine. How does the industry feel about a 42% tax rate? Because it seems the two big issues that have to be ironed out is who's got oversight and what's the tax rate going to be? 42%, you say what? Yeah, well, look, I think if you look at it, we believe at 16%, we do have tax parity with the casinos. And there's a Senate bill that is, at Gene Yell's bill, which is at 16%. Correct. And there's a House bill as well, uh, sponsored by uh, mm -hmm. Representative Danilo Burgos from Philadelphia. Look, ta uh, table games are taxed at 16%. I think many people would argue there's skill involved. There's tax parity when you look at our skill games. Plus, I think there has to be an acknowledgement that our games right now are legally operating, a unanimous Commonwealth Court decision, uh, legally operating right now. They are paying all applicable taxes. They're paying their sales and their property taxes. This will be an additional tax placed upon them. For a lawmaker, you're going to go to that American Legion and say, I'm gonna put a 42% tax on it. It's difficult. So we're looking to have that discussion. We're gonna see what the legislature finds, but we're willing to have that discussion. We've been fighting for regulation and taxation for years. Unfortunately, casinos have blocked us for many years. Well, the casinos, you're paying, as we already established, 54%. Uh, Gene Yaw's bill would be at 16%. Governor wants 42%. You said 42 is close to where you would be uh, okay with a compromise? 42% plus a 10% local share plus 2% should be 54%. One, casinos haven't blocked anything. That's simply not true. Two, that's Senator Yall bill is put in peso bill. You've had a bill. Man bill every, Senator, Senator Yall put in peso Maddox bill. And he kept, they kept referring to it under oath at a committee hearing as our bill, our bill, our bill. It is peso Maddox bill. Number three, a tax rate, we, we don't know how much money Pesomatic's making. We don't know how many machines they have in our state. We don't know how many locations their machines are. And despite the fact that your, P, uh, your CEO said under oath, I will get you that information to the members of the Senate Oversight Committee. So we're not having, you can't have a grown up conversation with a, a company that refuses to be transparent. If you, any taxpayer can go to the Pennsylvania Gaming Control Board site and you can find out any information you want about casino slot machine revenue, about table game revenue. So the, the whole notion that Pesomatic can't afford 16% is ludicrous. We have no idea how much money they're You mean 42%? 16% 40, is laughably low. Laughably low. But what do you pay in Virginia? They well, pay 25%, 28% in Virginia, I believe. But you just mentioned the gaming control board, so let's talk about that, because the other issue is who's got oversight according to the YAW bill, and YAW is sympathetic to your company because the machines are made in his district, we should note. Uh, he wants it to go to the Department of Revenue having oversight, but all the other gambling here is gaming control board. Why not the gaming control board? And I have a feeling in talking to some House folks, gaming control board is the way the legislature is going to lean on that. If we're going to do the, do the thing, that's going to be one of the concessions they're going to push for. I think it's going to have to be a real discussion about what's happened to the Pennsylvania Game Control Board. There should be hearings about some of the conversations that took place between casinos improperly, potentially illegally, to destroy the small skill game industry and destroy small business and fraternal clubs at the same time. Well, let's be clear on just a second, because the lottery has been very vocal as a critic, too, saying that you're siphoning $170 million from them, the casinos. So, yes, conversations were had among legal entities about what was questionable for many years, whether your machines were legal, 
in a negative way. Sure, They're government question. agencies, but not outside lobbyists and folks who work in the casino industry. Let me tell you this right now. There's a casino operating in the state of Pennsylvania, was just charged with, had a ruling. They were operating illegally in the state of Louisiana. We haven't heard anything from the Pennsylvania Gaming Control okay. Board. Why? If they're the most preeminent regulatory body, you'd think you'd hear something. They do the bidding of the casinos every single time. Well, I mean, the, the, the casinos kind of are the major thing that they oversee. I yeah, mean, so there would be a relationship there. No, no, no. And I, I, a lot of casinos would argue they don't. But let's just stick to the point of why not under the gaming control? Because that's what they do for a, a living. I think you would have to have some serious reforms. And the folks that were involved would have to come out. The, the stuff that they did to go against a legal product and legal businesses. It's not legal. Have, well, sir, Commonwealth Court ruled. It's not settled until, the, I think we have a Pennsylvania State Supreme Court for a reason. There's one operator or manufacturer of those machines, the Commonwealth Court ruled, and the Supreme Court said, we're not taking the case. It wasn't you. Uh, Your gonna, case is not settled until the State Supreme Court says we're not going to take well, it. Pete, we haven't number lost two, a single a notion, case, so we're happy to have that in the Supreme no, Court. It's, number well, two, the and notion... It would, but, but let me just no, say... I'm going to say something, Dennis. The notion mm -hmm. that people from the casino, my client, met illegally and properly... It's garbage. Mike, you know you're suing me in court. You're using Gene Yaw's law firm to do it. Yet you won't produce and, any documents. Why? Mike, you're suing me in court. You've been ordered, you know to, re we did? You've been ordered to produce documents oh, and you haven't done it. We Why? Met, we met with lawmakers. We worked with others in the industry. Mike Barley called me three or right. four years ago. We worked together to kill a VTT yep. bill. That was against you the law. You actually called me. Okay. That's but, a lie. That's, that's, that's true. Absolutely and you didn't lie. produce any documents for this because why? Mike, you know and I know that it's up to the law firm. Who hires a law firm who put in their bill where the state senator put in your I bill? I have not heard anybody ever question okay. the integrity but of Senator Gene Yaw before. I'm questioning your integrity. You can well, question. I'm questioning your integrity. I'm you, questioning yours. I know I, what you did. I know. Did you contact law enforcement but, and ask them to pick up our games? I contacted law enforcement repeatedly to pick up illegal skill games. You find one but they're law, legal. You find one law okay. enforcement who says, I, you call, talk about right, thousands of illegal gotta, machines, gotta, Mike. The bottom line is called, legality. Hey, called, guys, I never we called can, let's machines. just say this, I never though. Said about legality, that's, illegality, that's if, if the legislature, that's as that's we anticipate, Delaware makes County. them legal. Hang on. If the legislature makes them legal, then it's legal. Correct? Well, then it, then correct. The, all the stuff's moved. And they should tax it. And it appears that we're heading in that direction. The same way they do slot machines. Much, much more to talk about at a later time. Thank you both for being Absolutely. with us. Uh, and thank you for watching. We're going to be right back with much more This Week in Pennsylvania. And welcome back to This Week in Pennsylvania with our analyst, Christopher Nicholas of the Eagle Consulting Group, Brittany Cramsey, Britt Cramsey Communications. Thank you both for being with us. Uh, obviously, a, a bit of contention there between uh, the two sides. That fight actually has been brewing for several years. I will say it is one of the odder, O-D-D-E-R, things I've seen of these games just kind of pushing and elbow, elbowing their way in, given that they're kind of a gambling thing. And they didn't get regulated, didn't get taxed, and they're still in a limbo we world. We had representatives from these two sides on the show two or three years ago. And it was just as contentious, I was telling Brittany as we were yeah. off camera listening. I said, there must be so much money involved that they're going at each other this hard. It is such a unique situation. Imagine any other product, game, item entering Pennsylvania illegally and then managing to muscle its way into legality and now coming to the table and having a, a reasonable conversation about being taxed because now they're legal. I mean, imagine seeing that with marijuana, that if the police just ignored it and we sort of let it play through the courts for a while mm -hmm. and then said, well, we're going to stay, but we'll, we'll tax at an appropriate rate. It's such an unusual yeah. case. Sin but, is in, right? Because, I mean, legalizing marijuana and skills games and, and the state is the one that's addicted to the revenues. Well, it makes the state a gambling company, which yep. we already have. It would make the state a drug dealer if we did that stupid legalizing recreational <laughs> marijuana thing. And, and the money involved, it sounds like big numbers, but in terms of percentages, especially on the marijuana, in terms of percentages, it's just a drop in the bucket. It's not worth it. The whole skills game thing, I mean, I think they ought to go onto a corner and you know come out with a compromise so we can all get on with our lives. 
kids? Well, I think it is a lot of money, but it's also one of the things that might be a zero sum, that as these skill games gain more money, it takes it away from the lottery, which does fund essential programs, especially for seniors. Okay, and, and we should point out some skills games go to good community causes, too. When the Legion gets money, they you know support I, the local I, baseball team. And I yeah. was involved in it. I got to quickly wrap. Okay. We'll be right back. More this week in Pennsylvania after the break. This week in Pennsylvania, more with our analyst, Christopher, <laughs> Christopher Brady. We talked at the beginning of the show about polls being all over the board. If Franklin and Marshall came out with one this week that had Biden up 10. Other ones have Trump uh, up 5, 6. What's going on? Let me attempt to pump the brakes on the fr Franklin and Marshall poll. That poll was taken over the course of 12 days. That's not a poll. That's a slow motion train wreck. Also, I don't think anybody really thinks that Donald Trump is below 40. Their poll had him in the high 30s. So maybe it was a one out, an outlier. Maybe other polls were back it up. I don't know. I don't think it's a 10 point gap between Biden and Trump here. That doesn't sound right. I'd love if it were, but I think Chris is right here. I don't think it's a 10 point game right, right. now. <laughs> I, I do think the 12 day poll is really interesting because polls are typically such a tight snapshot. But what we've been seeing in a lot of these polls is trending toward Biden. This time a year ago, he was down one, he was down two. And now over 12 days, he's sliding down maybe five, maybe six, I think is probably more reasonable. Uh, but the uh, trajectory, me, I think, is what's interesting. Allow me to say I also agree with you. I think the trajectory. Wow, mark the day. I, I think the trajectory <laughs> since the State of the Union speech has been the information flow for Biden has been much better than for Trump. Trump's is all who he's yelling at, this court case, that course, court case, he can't keep him straight. But what do you make of the Jim Lee thing about Trump, that pollsters need to adjust, that uh, way back people wouldn't admit they were voting for Trump. Now maybe too many are, and they're the ones who are responding to polls. It becomes overly weighted for Trump. The big thing in 2016 is we didn't hold for education level, and that was the big line of demarcation for Trump folks. Uh, the polling industry has corrected that. Um, if Jim says you're getting too many Trump people responding, yeah. I'll take his word on it. Yeah. I think the, the electorate has changed a little bit. People were embarrassed in 2016 to say they're voting for Trump. They did it anyway. But I think his support has calcified. The people that support him support him so strongly and so deeply. And I think he's lost those squishy voters. Okay, I want to say a quick shout out before we go. Congratulations, WJET TV in Erie. Take a look. Uh, they celebrated their 58th anniversary this week. They went on the air April 2nd, 1966. Congrats.